it's important not to get scared. You gotta realize things are gonna get really weird sometimes. Something just doesn't become nothing. When it comes down to it, you gotta help things push through to the other side. You gotta have nerves of steel and a strong stomach. Do you ever get nervous? <laughs> no, it just comes down to sodium binding. Uh, like a circle of salt to contain it? That and flushing tampons. Wait, what? Always remember, hold your breath when passing a cemetery and when digging up a septic tank. My name is Larry Cochran, and this is the first time that I've been in stag wrestle since I was born. My mom went into labor with me when we were just passing through, and up until just recently, this town has been nothing more than an indecipherable word on my birth certificate. We moved around a lot, and after high school, I decided to go out west uh, to go to film school. Didn't exactly get to do the kind of work that I was hoping for. Uh, I did make movies, but they weren't exactly creatively fulfilling, uh, I guess. I was on the verge of walking away from it all when this guy contacted me about documenting his ghost hunting team. When I heard he was from Stag Rassel as well, it just sort of seemed like fate. So I contacted my buddy Duncan from film school and I got a room for rent here at Mrs. Malone's boarding house. So here we are, new old town and we're gonna see what's more likely, an afterlife or a second life for a dead career. It's me, Duncan, some ghost hunters, and an assload of clown dolls. Those are Mrs. Malone's. Shh. You comfortable? Yeah. Good. And if you decide that you want to put pants on for the rest of this. No, I'm good right now, but uh, you know, I'm pretty excited, obviously. <laughs> Great. Uh okay, uh so why don't we start with why you do this? I've believed in ghosts for a very long time since I was a young boy. I mean, it's not that different than septic repair. And when it comes down to it, it's all about communicating with those who have transitioned to the other side. Also, if you go by a cemetery with a young lady, a bottle of Jergens, maybe a Wham album, it's just on. It's a party time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, well, was it hard finding like-minded people in Stag Russell? No, it was hard. I mean, I, this is a very conservative area. And so, you know, I'm a very European-minded person when it comes down to it. No, the uh, paranormal. I meant actually the paranormal. Oh, actually, I just uh, put out a Craigslist ad. And after that, uh, Penny contacted me back. And then everybody else just kind of trickled in. Okay, good. And you guys feel like you've uh, seen enough stuff now that you want to start documenting it? I have to document this. And I'm going to tell you something. Hand to God. I had a full-on Dan Aykroyd experience with a ghost one time. And I, I tell you, I, I, everybody thinks that I'm lying about that, but the thing is, if I can capture that, it'd be, you know, with your background... In film. I, yeah, 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 I mean, you know, because one of my favorite films of yours was... My film was background, there's a lot of them, but yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, but when you came back into town, Stagrass will kind of kind of drew you in naturally, and I just feel that, you know, it's like one of my favorite Kate Beckinsale movies. Uh, Pearl Harbor, Underworld? No, the good one, Serendipity, John Cusack. And... Oh, huh, okay. Okay, uh, well, I think we're good, Colonel. Um, I'll just need some contact info from you, and I can start contacting no, the rest of them. it's okay. You know, I already sent Duncan over to Penny's house so he could start the first interview. Oh, speak of the devil. Hey, Mendelssohn. Mm. Yeah? Hello? Yeah, this is he. What? He's what? You, you don't have to yell at me. I mean, you gave me a key. I, sh I should be able to just go over. No, I, yeah, I understand. I'll, yeah, I'm on my way now. Right. All right, thank you. Uh, we, we got a little bit of a mix-up, I think. Yeah. For the record, I thought he was a burglar. No, I get that. Though the camera did throw me off a little. Your upper body strength is impressive. It's adrenaline. Listen, if there's any footage where I was wearing the towel, can you make sure that... Yeah, it'll be deleted immediately. We would never use that. Thanks. And if you ever meet my boyfriend, Brent, just don't mention it to him. He's not really a fan of immodesty around the house. Does he live here? No, not till we're married. Anytime soon? No. You guys been in love a long time? Love is a big word. 
We did go in 50-50 on some camping gear, though. So... Did you want to ask me about ghosts? Right. So when did you... I I'm sorry, I just want to make it really clear that neither Duncan nor myself were aware that you weren't expecting us. I, I believe you. That's probably on me for giving him a key. Or my address. Forgive me for bringing it up, but the two of you don't seem like you'd naturally gravitate towards each other. Oh, we don't, but natural's not really what paranormal investigation is about. So your role on the team is both treasurer and vice president. Yeah, I'm the main financial contributor to the group. Aside from this fake identity of the colonels that's drawing disability, Bernice doesn't want any more responsibility, and the colonel says it's a bad idea to waste a good head for figures, or vice versa. Gross. You know, if you wanted to interview everybody else, you could just come to the meeting later on. Unless you think he needs to rest. I think it would be a bad idea to let him fall asleep. Just try to ignore if there's a camera here and talk like you normally would. Okay. Many thanks, kind sir. So let's start with what brought you to the group. Well, I've had an interest in the unknown for a long time. I think most of the time, ghosts are just looking for some sort of connection, I guess. I hear that you're big on research. That I am. So, where do you typically find the best information? Oh, there are lots of books, both locally and regionally. And you can't forget movies. I really like Ghost and, like, Twilight and... That's not really about... Oh, I don't like to limit myself. <laughs> Scared of them? <laughs> no, I don't, uh, scare too easily. So, you've seen a ghost? No, but I've seen things. Orbs? No. Things. Are you ex-military or are we talking about something sexual? Uh, no! I... <sighs> okay. You can probably tell that I'm Italian. Huh? Well, the Italian community is pretty well known for not being something you'd want to cross. The mob? Oh, <laughs> I couldn't say that. So what? I couldn't say that. You know? Anyway, I know there are scarier things in the world than ghosts. And what this team needs is somebody to be able to keep their heads if the sh hits the fan. Eh? I don't know if he has any mob connections, but his mom is really tough. She usually kills the spiders for us at meetings. So, unless Enzo agrees to start doing laundry, his mom says we can't meet at their house anymore. My place weren't available because my house recently burned down for insurance purposes. I'd rather not keep coming here because when I show up at a library, people assume that I work here and try and get me to find books for them. Well, I say we take it to Terry's because, uh, you know, there's plenty of room and if uh, Bernice decides to dance for them, maybe we'll get our dinners comped. Let's put a pin in that and we'll keep our options open. What was that? Eh, it just happens sometimes. Ever since Carter the maintenance man died, it must be really hard to keep the wiring running smoothly. Speaking of running smoothly, we finally got our new infrared camera. <laughs> nice. Must have been a good month at the sausage factory, huh? <laughs> no, that weren't in your window. You see, Penny's folks were in the pork business, and that's how they come by all their money. Yeah, my family's Jewish. Just not practicing. It's not as weird as you'd think. And I think I know a good place to break it in. I can rent a storage facility over the weekend. We can have a dirty mattress in there. I'll get a couple girls by the weekend and maybe if uh, 
one of y'all join in, we'll, uh, we'll get things started. I'll help any way I can. No, no, you won't. I will refer you to how we broke the original camera and pass on that. Besides, I was thinking we might go somewhere like the Mason Schoen lot. <gasps> oh, I've got a Oh, how Excuse me, this is a library, don't you? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize someone was working in here. I'm not a librarian. It's on this beautiful old hill overlooking the lights of the Stagrassel paper mill. It's so romantic on the nights when the wind is low. It was the grisliest murder this town had ever seen. What they did to that man was ungodly. They're still finding bits and pieces today. I've always sort of related to Mason Schoen. You know, I think he was the last Jewish guy to come through this town before my family moved here. Of course, they murdered the hell out of him. They said he was a magician or something, and weird shit always goes down around the time of year that he died. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Plus, it's really close to local wrestling, so double win for Lorenzo, huh? If uh, he tries to communicate with us, then uh, the most important thing to realize is that we have a professional filmmaker with us and his credentials speak for themselves. <laughs> Do ghosts usually want their stories told on a larger scale? Well, I just figured, you know, if you had a uh, couple live girls that you knew. Anyway, uh, whatever gets you guys the best results is, is perfect for me. So if we're all free Friday after 6.30, let's agree that we can... Once in a while, these church groups like to come out here and start trying to protest us. This is so dumb. I could make one phone call and Wait, bring your mom out here. And look at that hole in your jeans. That is not the kind of hole you need to be involved with, buddy. Hey, Brent. Hey, hey, hey hon. Later at your place, right? Um, yeah, yeah, later. <laughs> I think God's about to send a flood. Only good ghost is the Holy Ghost! Amen! So, how did you guys meet? Mission work. Oh, your churches work together? No, he means he's trying to save me. Yeah, the whole occult thing is a little bit of an obstacle. He's talking about my Judaism. But I care about my pork princess way too much to let that stand in my way. And he doesn't know why I don't like that nickname. I'm sorry, Hamhawk Queen. That's not any better. So, here we are, going strong. Speaking of which, what are you doing this weekend? Well, Friday night we're testing out our new infrared camera. Really? Where? I'm not going to tell you because I don't want you to <laughs> protest us. <laughs> oh, then I guess I'll see you Saturday. Great. <laughs> well, I don't think that Brent and her are ever going to get married. I mean, I've always kind of viewed him as a bit of a pickle kisser, but I could be wrong. No, you actually. I was asking if you had ever been married. Oh, yeah, I've been married. <laughs> I've been married eight times by... Uh, by state law, I can't get married anymore, apparently. And uh, that's okay, but I got some wonderful grands. At this point, I feel like I need to check. Are you talking about grandkids or the biscuits? Oh, I'm talking about grandkids. They're beautiful, sweet, adorable grandkids. and Nothing like their father, and that's a, that's a good thing. You know, once that, uh, once that restraining order lapses, I'm hoping that you know, I can continue my relationship with them, too. But right now, you're on the market. Do you ever feel like ghost hunting interferes with your relationships? Oh, hell no. <laughs> when it comes down to it, you know, I, uh, I seek out some of these church ladies sometimes and, uh, you know, have them save me on a regular basis. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt having some recording equipment because uh, they kind of like that too. Do you think that hunting helps Bernice and Enzo with their romantic prospects? It would take supernatural forces in the universe to make that happen. Oh, oh, get it off! Get it off! Ah! 
Mason Schoen was this traveling salesman who came through Stag Rassel way back when it was just Stag. And he started having an affair with this town bigwig named Aaron Pitcher's wife. Well, you can't really blame him. Whew. No kidding. They used to have the old Pitcher family portrait hung up at the high school library, but it ended up providing too much of a distraction for most of the guys. And some of the girls. And if I'm going to be completely honest, I'd say I'd much rather be searching for her spirit than his. <laughs> <laughs> she was powerless to his charms and his advances. She was even going to run away and skip town with him. But on the day she was planning to lose herself to his powerful embrace and his punishing lips. Then her husband got a Dear John letter. And they murdered him just past the old train depot. Aaron Pitcher left the note stuck in his face with a knife. Even people who don't believe in what we do agree that weird things happen here. We've gotten some blips on the EMF before, but we're hoping that tonight is going to be the perfect combination of quiet, dark, and... What in the hell? Brent Less, are you kidding me? Hey, Porkchop. I did not expect to see you here at the first annual nighttime picnic at Scavenger Hunt. I found a tooth. What? What are you talking about? Oh, the mayor set this thing up like spur of the moment, I think, to like promote community togetherness or something. That bitch. That bitch. <laughs>You do understand how it seems a little strange that you just happened to organize something the night that we were planning to investigate. Well, I guess my inspiring choice of a nighttime community picnic could be described as strange to the uncreative or just anyone uninterested in town's welfare. Taylor, would you hand me my stapler? Mmm. But it does seem that the commu community could benefit from more fun events. Let's see. I'm thinking, oh, how about hide and seek in the graveyard next? Oh, you bitch. Um, how did you find out about it? It's a small town. People talk when a big shop director shows up. That boy should be considered a state treasure around here. And Duncan, he, he works a camera too. Them being here is just a benefit to this whole town. And I don't want a movie to get out that paints our town as a bunch of bloodthirsty villagers. However, if you'd like to discuss this further, we could perhaps talk about it at one of Stagrassel's many beautiful restaurants. Or perhaps the botanical gardens that were featured in several regional magazines last year. Freshies has the best milkshakes. Did it, it. Seen, not heard, Taylor. Yes, ma'am. Don't you think a boy like this should be seen, Colonel? You know, I don't care who's pinning what to your board. Everybody in this town knows that you shake your milkshake at everybody. Uh. Do we gotta get a permit or not? I don't know why you think Mr. Cochran would be so interested in a story about a promiscuous man that ruins relationships and causes general unrest in an otherwise orderly and lovely town. Nah, no, I'm not sure if they ever dated. Their subtext is so subtle. And personally, I don't think that type of behavior should be rewarded. I would even go as far to say that it should be punished. Terry's. Let's go to Terry's. Thank you for your time, Madam Mayor. Taylor, I'm hungry. Could you get me something sweet? Like a milkshake from Freshies? No! Larry, you are gonna love this place. I practically live here. 
They have the best food, the best service, and by God, after seven o'clock, some of the best dancers, right? <laughs> How are my favorite bunch of ghost hunters doing? Yeah, you're doing all right. Yeah, I'm doing all right then. Bernice, whenever you get ready to start in showbiz, we'd love to have you here. Started taking ballet lessons. Good. Terry, please. Penny, now you know you're always welcome to come up on A Cup Wednesdays and give it a shot, but I just don't think that we'd have a regular spot for you. And of course, we always thank you for stopping in at Terry's. With a lunch buffet from 11 till 2 every weekday, catering available, and specials for parties. Hey, check out our two-for-one beer specials. I'll be right back to take your order. Oh, no, he doesn't understand how air quotes work. Good guy, though. Remember the uh, commercials he used to shoot? <laughs> Down at Terry's, we take hospitality very seriously. You'll enjoy local favorites like Helen's chocolate cake or Carson's world famous chicken. Hope to see y'all again soon. I'm just saying, meatballs like these wouldn't fly in Little Italy. And I'm just saying, Stag Russell doesn't really have a Little Italy, unless you mean your mom's kitchen. There ain't nothing little about your mama. Those things are huge. You can't keep saying stuff like that. If you do, I'm gonna tell her. Couldn't we just go back to the lot tonight? No, Mary won't have it. She's got a picnic planned every week, every day, every hour. I don't know, she's just trying to keep her options open right now. We could test the camera out pretty much anywhere. Larry still needs to see us in action. We don't need just anywhere. A guy just called, a guy just called me because he thinks that someone died on his land. That's not city property, so the mayor can't touch us. Never again. Come on, Bernice, fist me. Oh. I figure we can head out there, check it out, see how we like the new camera, and hopefully she'll figure out that we're not gonna do anything to hurt the city's image. All right then. Ready to place your order? Hi, I'm Penny Mendelson. I think we spoke on the phone. Yeah. So you have reason to believe that someone passed here? Yes, ma'am. Kate, can you describe some of the activities that you've experienced? No activity as such. Was it orbs? Did you get the sense it was a lonely spirit? You know, voices. Voices ain't unusual. No, weren't no talking. Okay, if you just want to show us where to set up, we'll go ahead and get started checking levels. Maybe there's a temperature. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> sir, why would you call a paranormal team before you call the police? Well, sir, whatever the hell that is, it ain't normal. Now, so far, I just found the one. I know normally they come in pairs. Does that happen often? No. No, most people know that you call the police, not ghost hunters, if you find a body part. Right. Do you usually make a noise like that? That was also a first. Good. That's good. Porn. I made porn. What? I know the colonel likes to paint me as some kind of Oscar-worthy director, but I'm not. I mean, I figured you made porn. If the Colonel says you're one of his favorite directors, chances are that's what you do. I'm not gonna judge you. My family produces meat that we don't even eat. Can I ask you a question? It's kind of your job now. What's the appeal for you? For what? Stag wrestle, ghost hunting, any of this stuff? I guess... 
if there's ghosts, then that means that there's other things out there too. And I like the idea of there being something better out there and being the person that helps someone find it. Or maybe I just feel really bad for anybody that spends both lives in stag wrestle. Either way, I should probably make sure that you didn't get any puke on our camera. So, did you, uh, did you get that there money shot? <laughs> Wasn't my best work. <laughs> well, you know, I only watch your movies 10 minutes at a time, but I thought, uh, I thought your best work was much ado about <laughs> Right, uh, you a big fan of Electrolyte then? Oh, yeah. I thought her performance was a little bit forced. But I thought your lighting was wonderful. It, you know, it kind of had a very 1950s noir vibe with a very Shakespearean subtext. I think we're in good hands with you. Sir, I'm gonna need you to come with me. I'm gonna have to ask you some more questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So the job is not like I expected so far. I guess that's life sometimes. If I'm being honest, I don't know that I really believe in ghosts, and I haven't seen anything to suggest otherwise so far, but we don't know. But if looking for ghosts is how somebody looks for answers, a connection, a chance to face down their fears, or just something better, there are worse things in the world to search for. So who knows what we'll find in Stag Wrestle. Just a little bit further and Right here is where I had my first ever experience with a ghost. See, back in the 60s, this pair of bank robbers killed two cops who were searching the building for them. When I was about 16, I got into this building and I hadn't been here very long before I started seeing flashing blue lights. Obviously, I got very freaked out and hid, and then I just saw flashlight beams and voices calling out. That's the moment that I realized that sometimes good people get stuck in a bad place and it's important to try and communicate with them and tell their stories. So it was empty when you came here? Yeah. And you broke in? Had to get in somehow. So was there any chance it was just living police trying to figure out who was in the building? So I've been in Stag Rassel now for about two weeks. I was really nervous about coming clean to the Paranormal Mystery Squad, but I think it went pretty well when I finally bit the bullet. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that's how I got into the adult film industry. So. Would I have seen any of your movies? Oh, I can let you borrow a few. I have a collection. Well, would I have seen any of them? Oh, I hope not. What are they about? Well, you like romance novels, right? Do I? Can I borrow some too? Bernice, I'd be happy to give you a sack load. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag truth. <laughs> so after some lengthy explanation, everybody seemed more or less okay with my body of work, despite uh, working with bodies part. Uh, let's see, what else has been going on? Um, oh, we got some new interns. Unpaid. They're pretty cool. They just sort of stand around until I tell them what to do. 
So uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, and Duncan uh, has way more of a stomach for this kind of stuff than the documentaries he used to work on. Oh! Oh no! Get up! Oh, let it go! So, I guess I'm gonna stick around for a while. They were good with it. Maybe stag wrestle's cooler than I thought it was. Some of stag wrestle. Yeah, I'm meeting up with the rest of the group later, uh, but they wanted to eat at Terry's and Brent won't eat there because... I just don't agree with that lifestyle. So Terry is gay? No. Oh. Yes, he is, but that's not why Brent won't eat there. The only strip I need is my little bacon strip right here. I can't judge Terry for his actions, though. Heck, there are three men I would choose over Penny any day. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yep, that's my competition. God. Uh, Ma'am, you're gonna have to put that chair back. Right, sorry. Anyway, I have got to get going, but I was supposed to give you this. Monica Montgomery asked if I would get in touch with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ow. You're all done here. The young man said you were going to take care of the check. Of course. Of course. I'm just saying that lighting up her life should be rent enough for my ma. Yeah, but it would be really, really helpful if we could start having meetings there again. If the knitting club hadn't canceled at the last minute, we would have ended up stuck in the boiler room again. So if we're all free, we can meet up at 8 o'clock? Yes. 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 I think I love you. Can we go to dinner before? Want to sit with them on the floor? No! Hey, do you that? So, I don't suppose that you heard about my date this past Saturday? No, so for every boiler room, a silver lining. Guys, we have got to take a look at the budget. Between what we're paying Larry and Duncan and the rent at Mrs. Malone's, we really don't have any financial wiggle room for... Or whatever the f that is. Well, you might want to look over that budget again. Uh, it actually picks up some really good images. You know, I used it on my date this past weekend, and uh, I can show you the footage if y'all want to see it. But, well, I ma mainly got it for overhead views, so. Won't it kill our audio? No worse than the Colonel's breathing, huh? I have a rare condition called wake apnea. I also have a five inch long uvula which is way less inches than... Well, we're gonna want all of our gear in working order because check this out. Miss hmm. Mendelssohn and Associates. This Sunday, Brent asked me to pray for your little group. Of course, that reminded me that you've always wanted to come and take a look at my house. And I thought, there's no time like the present. My doors are open to you this Thursday night. Sincerely, Monica Montgomery. Oh, oh, hey. <laughs> this is big. It's this huge old house built in the late 1800s. The Montgomery family fixed it up a few years ago, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Honestly, there's no evidence of the huge fire or the four people that died in it. I don't care what my mom says. I can have meetings at my house if I want to. It just happens that I don't want to at the moment. I actually meant tell me a little about the Montgomery's house. Oh. <laughs> Occasional screaming, smoke coming from windows where there isn't a fire, stuff like that. I don't know about ghosts, but there is nothing unusual or unnatural about my interest in Monica Montgomery. <coughs> she won Miss Stag Russell so many times, she eventually just dropped out because she felt like if she got one more tiara, it would just be gaudy. 
She moved out to Hollywood for a while and actually got cast in a recurring role on a soap opera, but she moved back because she said no one in LA makes a decent biscuit. And because she got married. In the most baffling relationship I have ever seen. You find their relationship baffling? Yeah, why? Murray Montgomery seems like a nice enough guy, but he seems like the type who would tuck his shirt into his underwear, a bit of a window licker. I just think it's a bad match. You'd think it was just a gold digging tale as old as time, but the weird part is she is completely loaded. They bought the old house with her money. If she was gonna marry for love, I don't see any reason why I couldn't be the one digging her gold. They fix up the house, but like I said, there's some pretty strange stuff happening there. We've been trying to get in and check it out for years, but she's pretty much shut us down. Until now, I guess. Guys, I don't want to get all sappy, but I'm really glad that things are finally happening for us, and I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm glad I get to share it with people like you. And since we have a few minutes left and nothing else really to cover, why not? Enzo, what is going on with your face? I did a little yard work today. Did, did I get some sun? It's probably my Italian complexion, huh? You're so lucky. Everyone told Monica and Murray that they should just tear down the old house and build a new one from scratch. But Monica told them... Of all people, I understand what a blessing good bone structure is. I'm so happy you all are finally able to come and get a closer look at my home. I hope you'll find something. Oh, would you look at that? I totally forgot you were all filming today. It's okay. I mean, this is Larry and Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd known that, I would have done something with my hair. But just because I'm all a shambles doesn't mean you all should reschedule. So please, make yourselves at home. Uh-oh. Am I ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille? <laughs> oh, mwah. Believe it or not, he's never actually worked in the business. He's just hilarious. And a bit of a bad boy. <laughs> this is my husband, Murray. But don't mind me. I'll just be watching reruns of 24 here in a bit. We might have to do some audio recordings later. Oh, don't worry. I'll turn it down in case something blows up. <laughs> Well, as you can see, I went with a very muted color palette and study. It allows for the furniture to be more expressive, but still gives you the freedom to move it around. And this is the exact spot that Bertram Drewer burned to death, right? I can see why. Things are starting to heat up a bit in here. Maybe for some, getting even a, a bit moist. <clears throat> well, my very handsome husband Murray here can turn the air down, so... Oh, look who it is, my beautiful, talented daughter, Matilda. Do we have any more gushers? Now, honey, what did I hear you singing in your room earlier? I wasn't singing in my room. Oh, now, honey, don't be shy. Sing a few bars for the camp. I mean, our guests. <sighs> <clears throat> She's just being bashful. <laughs> I guess we can continue the tour. Right through there is the kitchen. And that is where the fire started, so we get whiffs of smoke every now and again. And it's also where my family was photographed with the cover of Stag Rassel magazine last year. Uh, Miss Montgomery, we're actually somewhat familiar with the history of the house. If you want, just to save time, we can go ahead and start setting up. Well, yes, of course. And um, young man, would you like me to show you to the restroom so you can wash your face? I just got some sun today is all. Um. Okay, well, it's just upstairs, and there's another one down the hall in case anyone needs it. Well, I guess I've shown you where the kitchen is, and I don't suppose anyone needs to see my pottery studio, so... Did you say pottery studio? Yes, it's a little hobby of mine. Like with a wheel and everything? Oh, yes. I go in there from time to time. I got the pottery studio! But it's not part of the original house. Residuals! Uh, Mrs. Montgomery, I'd love to talk with you more about your experiences here in the house. Yes, of course, and I'd love to talk to you more, too. In 
1907, a fire started when Ermintrude Drewer left some cornbread in the oven too long. Now, it wasn't that bad, but they threw liquor on it to try and put it out, so it got out of hand. Then Bertram Drewer thought if he started another fire, that it would burn up anything that the kitchen fire could use for fuel, so it got worse. The Drewers died in the downstairs study, but most of the household staff actually made it up to this landing. That's where they tried to break out a window and call for help. Lots of people say that sometimes you can hear them screaming for help on some nights. Obviously, we have a little experience in the area, so we know what to expect. <laughs> nice tan. Can I borrow it for the next meeting? Now, we only have one live mic, so you're going to have to speak in right here. So <clears throat> uh, I actually have a good microphone on this camera. I need backup, Cochran. <laughs> So why don't you tell me how it's been since you fixed up the place? <laughs> well, anytime you choose to take on an old house, you know, problems will arise. Leaky pipes, creaking stairs. Maybe mysteriously having your paint scratched off the front door. A little this and that. <laughs> Have you personally ever seen anything out of the ordinary? Well, I don't know if I should be telling you all this, but the other night I was in the kitchen and I saw something unbelievable. My lovely daughter Matilda came in and did the most amazing dance she made up right there on the spot. Do that dance for them, baby. You remember the one. Remember to smile, baby. Smile! <laughs> if you don't find a focal point, you're not gonna get those turns. <laughs> okay, watch mama, baby. Watch mama. I guess I remember, you know, watching her the other night and that's how I remember this. <laughs> you gotta sell it, baby. Sell it! And smile! Mama! Um, something like that. Could have used a bend and snap at the end, but it was good. <laughs> mm. Okay, the temperature just dropped noticeably up here. And, and I'm picking up something on the audio. It, it's faint, but it definitely sounds like somebody in distress. <sighs> she always embarrasses me! Oh, okay, that explains it. The old ball and chain said somebody's getting too hot, so I adjusted the air. You guys getting any? That was mine. <sighs> Bend. Snap! Lick the body, extend the sensuality, and sniff the finger. <laughs> so, that's how I earned my airfare back from Australia. That's another thing that we have in common, the power of dance. Thanks, Colonel. That was as surprising as it was lengthy. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go see if Murray needs me for anything. Anything at all. <sighs> okay, Larry, you can, you can go now. What? I got it from here. I mean, I, obviously Monica Montgomery did not invite us here to search for ghosts. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty obvious to me, too. She's not gonna make her move if you're still here, so you need to go. What are you talking about? Just go find Penny and Enzo or something. <laughs> I don't think that that's... Just... I can only maintain this three to four hours. I guess I'll check with the rest of the team. We've been at it for a while now. <laughs> Uh, so far, we have seen a traumatized kid, <laughs> Mr. Murray's stand-up routine, <laughs> and at this point in time, the only screaming I'm anticipating is my own. Oh! Maybe that was... <laughs> oh! Oh my goodness, I'm... I'm sorry, I was, um... I was startled. Did... Did you change your clothes? Well, I made an adjustment, so, uh, let's be honest. You didn't invite us here to, uh, investigate a haunting, now, did you? Well, no. So, uh, let's talk about what this is really all about. Uh, where's the movie guy? Larry? Yeah, I want him in here. I thought you wanted me in there. What? No. Oh, my God, no. Absolutely not. I meant in the room. And just to clarify, no, no, God no. I am oh. married happily. And even if I wasn't, okay. 
Absolutely not. Okay. I mean, okay. not even in an apocalyptic scenario. Okay, I got I mean, you. the only way that could possibly happen would be if, oh my goodness, what could that have been? Wait, what has to happen? Any successful filmmakers want to be in this room right now because I think we're about to have a ghostly encounter with... Your daughter makes an excellent ghost, Miss Montgomery, but unfortunately she's not really what we're looking for. Um, guys, I think we can probably just go ahead and pack up. Could somebody grab Bernice? Yeah, I think she's in the, uh... <gasps> can you knock? Um, that is, uh, we, we can grab the stuff upstairs and then come back down for Bernice. I can help. No, I think she's got it. Let's get this downstairs and then I'll grab our camera. Yeah, that was a waste of a memory card. I'll probably just erase all this since it's a bus. Don't worry, sweetheart. Murray and I do our own little ghost roleplay every now and again, but maybe next time, try it with a partner. Uh. Thanks again for letting us use your house, Miss Montgomery. We, we really appreciate it. You're quite welcome. And Larry, if you want to come back and film anytime, we'll be here. Here's my information. And look at that. I wrote it on the back of Matilda's resume. Hey guys, check out the hostages I just saved. Hey everybody, Shelby told me she wanted to visit her best friend Matilda tonight. <clears throat> I did see some unusual things tonight. I saw a man sweat off his tan. I saw the Colonel's burlesque routine. And I saw a woman who moved from the West Coast because stag wrestle felt more like home. Now, I'm not saying that Monica Montgomery and I are like by any means, but uh, it's nice to know you can come back and lay down roots. And it was really cool to be seen as a filmmaker. If I learned anything tonight, it's that there's nothing wrong with a little pageantry. A little pageantry. Also, you can sell a really bad routine with a smile. I should get them to smile more. Do you, you think we could actually get Penny to smile? So tell me a little bit about how you went from running regular tech to doing the ghost hunting gear. I've always known that I had gifts. I've always been good with uh, machines, computers, that sort of thing. But who wants to program when you can listen for spectral voices on audio from the old TV hospital? So what are some of the more unsettling things you've heard? Unsettling? Uh, nothing really. Annoying sometimes. Go on. Well, sometimes I'll be listening to it late at night after work, and right in the middle of hour two of the white noise, and the colonel's breathing, suddenly it starts. The banging, and, and, and the voice, just relentless. Bang! Bang! Lorenzo, if you're going to have friends over, your room needs to be clean. Ma! I'm going to be in that room in five minutes, and if there's underpants all over your floor... Ma! We're, we're right in the middle of something for the show. Can you please just give me five more minutes to do this? We're down to four and a half, and you're going to be doing the laundry, too. So I think we're settling in the stag wrestle pretty well. People have been really welcoming and eager to help out. Like, really eager to help out. By the way, there is such a thing as too many casseroles. It's not what I expected here, but uh, it's been pretty nice. And overall, I guess there's really nothing that I'm lacking here. Especially clowns, Mrs. Malone. Where does she get these things? Okay, well, I appreciate everybody meeting up. Unfortunately, there's not much to discuss. Um, going to private property has kept the mayor off our backs. 
but nobody's reached out lately, so I guess the only real update is Bernice's hair, which is as good a reason as any to meet. I've been red for a long time. It reminded me of the heroine in the stable hand's mistress. But my Nana said red's a color for hussies, and after reading Archie comics for a while, I think she's right. I don't want to lead men into temptation. So I decided to go for something a little less enticing, like Penny did. Oh. If this is the leader of the Paranormal Mystery Squad, I have a matter I wish to discuss with you. Please tell Larry Cochran that we'd be thrilled to have him at this month's meeting of the Historical Society to meet some young ladies with a passion for discussing town history. Larry, don't even worry about that because they don't even like to do anything until after the meeting's over, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that. Well, the invitation was for Larry. My invitation was implied. Aren't you banned from the Historical Society after the incident at the Horse Apple Festival? No, my, my dance card is full. See, I got these, these date naps right here. Aren't you banned from Tinder? No. I'm banned from Bumble. And Match. And eHarmony. And Black People Meet. I may have reported one of his profiles. Which one? I mean, does it matter? I'll be honest, I thought when I invited Larry here that it would open some doors for us. But the only one who's having doors open for him, amongst other things, is Larry. Also, he's, uh, He's pretty stingy when it comes to tips to help us edit adult content. Well, me and my little club that I have, it's on the down low. Yes, the Colonel has sent me several videos to edit, but I have declined because I don't want to do that kind of work anymore. And I've also met a lot of nice ladies in Stag Rassel, and I just don't want to know what happened on their kitchen counters before they made me a casserole. Well, unless the Historical Society has something that they think we need to look into, I, I guess that's it. And there's really no need to meet up next week in the absence of something to check out. Actually, I have something you might all be interested in. He does this every now and then. The first few times you get excited, but it's almost always just a tract. Don't tease me, Les. I mean, I get enough of that from Christian Mingle. No, something unbelievable happened, and I need you guys to come check a place out. Where is it? My church. Oh, f sake. Brent, we talked it over as a group, and the Holy Ghost doesn't count. I think it does. No, I mean there was an incident. What kind of incident? We were having a lock-in last weekend to <clears throat> spread the good word to at-risk teens. Later that night, A.J. Sims saw the bride. I thought the bride was just a story. So did I. But he swears he knows what he saw. And some things did seem to be amiss. So I thought you guys could come check it out. Where did he see her? The corner room behind the baptismal. The, the room where I go by myself every week to get everything ready to record the sermon? That's the spot. The bride is the ghost of a woman named Naomi Perkins. She was engaged to this local doctor who was also a deacon at Brent's church back in the day. They were supposed to get married when he came back from the war, but it never happened. So he died? Nope, he met someone overseas. She was waiting for him to come home, sewing her dress, putting aside money for fireworks for the celebration, the whole thing. But he met a woman in France named Violette, and well, the heart wants what it wants. She had never been exactly stable, but she kind of went off the deep end, and well, he left, and when he came back, she would just show up at the church every once in a while, and she'd be wearing her wedding dress and asking if he loved her again yet. She dyed her hair to look more like the new wife, redid her makeup, styled the whole shebang. One day, she tried to attack Violette with a knife. Her family had her committed and she died shortly thereafter. But people say that you still see her spirit at the church from time to time, especially when there's a wedding. 
I mean, I always thought the family overreacted, but I mean, who amongst us hadn't had a, a crazy ex attack him from time to time with a knife? Yeah, I I'm safe, Ma. It didn't happen while I was here. I, I just wanted to let you know. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, I love you, too. Listen, I, I gotta go. I already said that. Bye. To be honest, I'm actually really excited about this. Brent and I have been together for a year and a half, and the past 16 months have been pretty rough. So him coming to me with this is actually a step in the right direction. A rough how long? I mean, who's counting? I appreciate any help you can offer. I know it will put the kids' minds at ease. They're coming back? Oh yeah, they're curious. You couldn't keep those kids out of church. Maybe a lesson in there about not letting ghosts keep you from God. You know... But. I think this is going to be good for all of us. And you guys, you're going to be such a great example for the kids. So, as you can see, this is an example of what happens when you give into temptations, such as prideful vanity, hedonism, lascivious reading, and occult activity. Okay. But they found their way back to the house of God. Remember, it's never too late. Right. Thank you so much for that introduction, Brent. Yeah, so we are here to look for evidence of uh, paranormal activity. And maybe Jesus. Right, because there's nothing weird about that story. <laughs> we normally break off into smaller groups, so we'll probably split you among us, and we will need you all to sign a release form. That's right, we're working with a bona fide LA... Colonel, please. Professional filmmaker. No. You make movies? Now I just document their ghost hunting. How'd you get that job? Well, he's one of my favorite directors. So, what else did you make? Are you on YouTube? He made porn. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, he, he did what? Guys, could you please not put me in your stories or whatever? Could we have a brief word? Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Why would you let me bring a pornographer into my church with kids? Yeah, uh, about that. Do you think you could exercise your power as youth minister to make them delete any photos that they took? Adult filmmaker kids, camera, it's kind of a bad look. Shit. Sh should I just go? No. He's not a pornographer anymore. He's a documentarian. And I told you that. I thought you meant that guy. Well, then why did you let me bring him in here? To tell you the truth, I kind of forget he's there sometimes. You know, that, that happens sometimes. But if you're concerned about the quality of this man's work, I will vouch for him. He is someone who does not sacrifice the money shot for the story. Or vice versa. Brent, Larry is just a, a normal guy now. He's settled down and is dating Ernestine Malone. What? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You two moved in together. I am not dating Mrs. Malone. Oh, well, that's what I've been telling all my friends. Well, who's asking if I'm single? And are they comfortable getting on camera? That's what I want to know. <laughs> so you're not dating each other, you're just uh, living together? Yeah, with Duncan. Wow. <laughs> no, we're, we're tenants. It's a boarding house. Uh, I think you should consider it. You two are really well matched. You know, now that it's out in the open, I, maybe I should voice this, but I've never been comfortable with the undercurrent of sexual tension between you two when you're in a room. You, you've been uncomfortable? Brent, the point is, Larry lost his way. But look at where he is on a Friday night. Not with one of the wild girls of the historical society. No, here, in a church. 
And when one is lost, isn't it our duty to welcome them back into the fold? Larry Cochran, welcome to the Stag Rassel Church of Enthusiastic Evangelism. Please don't spend any time with the kids unaccompanied. Okay, which one of you is AJ? Great. Let's talk a little bit more about what you saw and maybe head back that way. Enzo, you stay down here with Bernice because there have been sightings of the bride near the kitchen, which makes sense because that's where she picked up her knife. You want me to stay closest to where she grabbed a weapon? And y'all can come with me to the hallway where she attacked Violet. I'll be right back. I'm going to my office for a bit. Really have some things I need to pray over. No, Ma, they're not making me stay. I I'm just nervous. <laughs> Nobody's bullying me. Listen, I need to get back in there. I'll text you. Yeah, I I you too. Bye. Are you crazy? Why did you stay here by yourself? This is where Penny said to stay. Yeah, but what if the bride would have shown up? That's what we want to happen, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, but what if she had attacked you? Why? She was a crazy lady who got left for another pretty, love-struck woman. She would have probably gone right for you on sight. You think I'm pretty enough to get attacked by a ghost? Are you kidding me? If I were a vengeful ghost, I'd stab you before anybody else. Um, did everyone leave while I was in the restroom? Now see, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that this is above your waist, otherwise it's just gonna pick up audio of you scratching against your jeans. So, are we gonna get paid for this? <laughs> no, 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 this is worldly experience right here. Have you actually seen a ghost before? Seen one? Hell, <laughs> I... Oh, wait. You told us to turn our phones off so it won't interfere with your equipment. Getting my equipment interfered with is exactly what I'm looking to do. Let's see right here, give me a minute. Are we ghost hunting or are we just watching you get ghosted? Say what? Dating apps, right? What do you want? Tinder? Happen? Was that what you kids are into these days? Gross! No, they're for old people. My mom used to be on some, but she had to delete her account for a while because creepy old dudes kept messaging her. Let me see your profile. Oh, you're not my type. Just deal with your own stuff. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. Come on, Colonel. Maybe we can help you. Yeah, I helped my mom set up her profile, so I'm pretty good at this stuff. Oh. Oh. Uh, see? First, we need to get you a new profile picture. Um, Ooh. let me look through your camera roll. Oh, no, 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 no. Camera roll, camera roll. We're gonna roll past that, and I'm gonna delete some of these off of here. Just do that. Hey, I don't mean to tell you your business, but your movies have been pirated a lot. Yeah, it happens. I need to forward this to my friends. Hey, respect the art, kid. Okay, AJ? Brent said that you told him that things were amiss after you saw the bride. What was there other than a sighting? Uh, some loud noises, smell of sulfur, a weird mist. Okay, and what were you doing at the moment that she appeared? I don't know, it was all so crazy. I was probably just praying thinking over some of my favorite psalms. Mm -hmm. And what first alerted you to her presence? Um, somebody was humming the bride song. She has a theme? No, I mean the here comes the bride thing. And then she appeared in the room and it was super creepy. 
And did she speak to you or interact in any way? She... I can't do this. Take a breath. Don't let the camera make you nervous. I'm not nervous about your camera. I have a YouTube channel. I just... I didn't see the bride. You mean that you heard something or... No, I mean... I lied about it. I didn't see anything. Are you f***ing kidding me? I don't think you can say that in a church. Obviously, ghosts don't scare me, but we don't typically deal with violent spirits. Stagrassel is a pretty peaceful town, aside from the meth labs. And the mob that killed Mason Schoen. Right. So we aren't in any danger. I don't know, Eric. Would you calm down and let me work? Sorry. Hey, which way did Ellen go? Which one is Ellen? The girl? She went with the colonel. Anybody else go with them? One of the other kids. Chris? Figures. What does that mean? Uh, hand me that tape. People always want to hang out with Chris. Ellen always wants to be around Chris. And you'd rather she hang out with you? What? No. Is there any agony sweeter than unrequited love? Look, she didn't shoot me down or anything. I just haven't asked her out yet. I think she's too into Chris. You know what? Screw Chris. Ew, what? Uh, no, not... Listen, if you want to be with Ellen, you should give it a shot. Let's go find the Colonel's group. In Stab Hall? Yeah. Here. You take this. And you? Take this. Let's go get your girl. This is all so heroic. A prank. Yeah, you know Matilda Murray? She had the idea to throw a bottle rocket into Mr. Brent's office. His window faces the bridal room, but she tripped and dropped it, and it went off in the room with us. She freaked, so I came up with a stupid story so she wouldn't get in trouble. And you came up with a ghost? You didn't want to go with something a little more believable? I mean, you're here, right? Fair. Besides, it's not like she's not real. I just didn't see her. Right, but this verified sighting is now fake. There's no reason for me to be here. Investigating a strange sound that we just heard behind the baptismal. I'm here because you said you needed someone to play off on camera. Focus, please. I'm gonna set up the EMF meter in the baptismal. You look around up here, see if you see anything strange. Just keep talking. Uh, I don't really know what I'm supposed to say here. I usually do gameplay videos, but... Oh, shit. Okay, uh, suck in your gut a little. Alright, and give me a little more attitude. Okay, that's a picture. Okay, so your bio no longer says, let's break that posturepedic bed. Instead, it says that you appreciate mature women. And I changed your interest from armadillo racing to wildlife conservation. <laughs> you know what? When Brent said we're going to be working with you kids, I just thought, you know, y'all was going to be little assholes like my son. But things are working out. This is kind of nice. So I was thinking about undoing this button right here no, to show no, my no, treasure trap. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> I sent the pic. Once Ellen gets it uploaded, you are going to get so many rice flakes. <laughs> well, I've never done that, so let me get some stretching in. Oh, wow. You already have your first match. See, I told you we were good at this. It says here that she's a dental hygienist and... Ooh, look at... Ew! Ellen, are you okay? Eric? Why do you have a cheese grater on your arm? For protection? You should always have protection. What happened? 
Did you see her? No, but my mom swiped right on this old creep. <laughs> We're too good. Our powers of romance are a dangerous society. Well, we should head back to Fellowship Hall. Or, Elle, would you like to go with us? Or maybe just hang out sometime? Like a date? Oh, that's so cool, but no thanks. I mean, you're awesome, but I don't. It's okay. I get it. Hey, so we can walk back with you guys and take a picture for your dating profile. Apparently I have a chance with Ellen's mom. You're such an ass, Chris. Definitely looks like she's using a Coke bottle right there. Okay, um, came down into the baptismal and the main door shut and locked behind me. Um, I think AJ fled, so we're not, oh, okay, all right. Uh, the baptismal font doors are opening behind me. I don't know, but, <gasps> what the? Brent? Well, hey, short rib, um, uh, have you found anything? Did you lock me in here? Are you trying to baptize no, me? No, no, but hey, if that time alone made you rethink any choices, I mean, I'm here, I've got all this water already, and... What is wrong with you? Stop! I want to help you. We're running with a crowd that is worse and worse <laughs> all the time. I half expect you to join the historical society. Brent, please! Brent, come on, man, that's enough! Oh, hey, no. Hey, Jay, what are you doing, buddy? Okay, in hindsight, I can see how that was overstepping. This is so stupid. This fight, absolutely. Should we apologize in three? No. no. What are we doing? Brent, do you love me? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm called to love all. Do you even like me? Because you don't seem to like any of my interests or aspects of my personality. Well, of course I like you, you're... You know it's okay, you don't have to make a list because I don't like me very much when we're together and I think we both deserve better than that. Wait, are, are you breaking up with me? Because we, we bought camping equipment and it's... Which we never used. Brent, you don't even like to hold my hand. I can't imagine what sharing a tent with you overnight would be like. I don't want to be Naomi Perkins. I don't want to hang around the church forever hoping that someday some guy loves me. And, you know, providing a convenient excuse for kids to set off fireworks indoors. Hey, come on. I told you that in confidence. I think you're a good person. But you cannot be so focused on the afterlife that you make life worse for people in the here and now. I appreciate that you wanted to do what you thought was best for me, but I can't do this anymore. Penny, after a little prayer, I think we should break up. Okay, Brent. I know it didn't go so well last time, but I know a spot where you can throw something in his office window, if you want. <sighs> can we cut? Oh, hey, uh, I wanted to apologize. I didn't mean to give you bad advice. Don't worry about it, it's okay. It's whatever. At least now I know she's not interested. You're okay. Do you need to stand on the side of a cliff and stare pensively at the horizon? It sucks, but 
I'm good. So, no offense, but this ghost hunting thing is kind of lame. Chris is going to drive us to Waffle House. Oh. Okay, well, um, have fun. <laughs> hey, uh, Bernice? Maybe next time. Oh, hey, are you packing it in? Are we done? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> no, you are not supposed to interfere with the subjects of your documentary. But you're also not supposed to baptize people against their will, so I guess a lot of people were bending the rules tonight. That was not fun to watch. But it is true that a tough scene can have a good payoff. If I learned something tonight, it's that it's good to know when it's time to move on. And just because a relationship with one person doesn't work out, if you have a good group, you have somebody to fall back on. And apparently I've been in a very serious relationship with Mrs. Malone for a while. Ouch. If there's one major takeaway from tonight's adventure, it is definitely that I need to join the Historical Society. The cool breeze slid across the curtain through the open window, but I could tell the chill I felt was something otherworldly. Although I couldn't see his ghostly form, I could feel him. And that cold set a fire in me that would last the whole night. Hold on, you're saying this actually happened? Oh yes, it definitely happened. And it's all in my new book. Your book? My hours got cut back at Les by Electronics through no fault of my own. And my ma said I'd have to get a second job if I wanted to keep living at home. So she set me up with this lame, boring office job. Cronus and Sons, this is... <clears throat> Cronus and Sons, this is Lorenzo. So it's not working out so well. No, it is not working out so well. Everybody knows that Italians are a people people. I flourish around the public. This job is no good. You think you have enough sugar there, Colonel? God knows what I wouldn't do to have some sugar right now. The Colonel's in a bit of a... A drought! A sweatless, sugarless, womanless drought! He's a little sensitive about it. As for me, I feel great. I haven't been this happy since... Huh. Okay, um, I know that we've all been a little scattered lately, haven't been able to meet up as frequently, but I think we have a really exciting opportunity tonight. As both of you, all of you know, Bernice has gotten us access to Old Man McCarter's bookstore. I would really like it if we could all, all of us be on our best behavior because if it's as active as people say it is, it would be a great spot for repeat investigations. Which is good, because I don't think we're going to get invited back to the church anytime soon. I most definitely have been kicked out of a church before. That's fair. People say McCarter started his store back in the 1920s because he had a ferocious, lustful love of books. He collected them from all over the world, said he wanted to spread that joy to others. I guess he was so obsessed he'd read for days and days with no sleep or 
Whatever. He needed it so bad that he couldn't stop. He had a, he had a throbbing. Until one day he just died from exhaustion, his book still in hand. Others say the television came along and crushed everyone's desire to read, so he took his own life. No, he died of the flu, or syphilis. That's subject to some debate. But the store is haunted as So yeah, if we could just all do our best to act like people, that would be great. Oh, and Larry, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, I was just thinking, since the last investigation went kind of uh, awry, maybe we could all refocus. You know, maybe we could make this more of a cinematic experience. Cinematic? Yeah, maybe a little more dangerous, you know, a little sexier. Sexier? Like stunts? I could do some stunts. Well, I just feel like we can get more suspense out of these investigations, you know, really draw the viewer in. Oh, I see how it is. You get your face plastered on the paper, and now you're all Mr. Engorged Ego. <laughs> no, it's... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. The article turned out nice. Congrats. Larry got a big write-up in the local paper, which you know, because you're Larry. Stag Russell's son returns home from Hollywood. I guess it was kind of neat. He's really popular right now with people who still read the newspaper. It really isn't that big of a deal. I mean, you get used to the attention after a while, uh, so. Actually, I have a copy here if, if you want to get a shot of it. Uh. It was a little overboard and a lot poorly written. Apparently there's nothing else to write about around here, but Oh wait, there's a semi-professional paranormal group. Apparently they chase around the lingering spirits of the dead. We're amateur, at best. Enzo, do you need some aspirin? Or a bell in a high tower to ring? Man, what I wouldn't do to get my bell rung right about now. Colonel. Enzo's actually been acting weird since he started the job a couple weeks ago. Which is when Bernice started coming around less. Seriously, buddy. Do you need some food? Some caffeine? A gas station air mattress? I know I'm not using mine. I get it. Everybody's used to me being this big tough guy, and I'm off my game a little. It's just... It's just this job. That's all. He says it's the job, but word on the street is... Bernice got herself a new boyfriend, so... It's probably Bernice. It's most likely Bernice. It's Bernice. Excuse me. Okay, I guess we get started unloading. Oh, where's the can? Oh, God. Not what I had in mind. Hey, Penny. Yeah. Does this thing look okay? Am I straight? Um, let's see. Yeah, there you go. Um, hey, you look really nice. Really? Absolutely. He looks more than just nice. Um, hi. I'm Penny Mendelson. This is Enzo. My name is Amelia. It's nice to meet you both. Uh, same. So, how long have you been working here? About seven years now. Been the manager for the last two. Have you seen anything uh, strange over the years? <laughs> you wouldn't believe some of the things I've seen. I was telling your friend earlier. Bernice! Hey, guys. Hey. Seems like I haven't seen you in forever. Yeah, things have been pretty wild lately. Hey, hey, Bernice. <laughs> hey, Enzo. Wow, you look different. Well, I don't know if you heard, but I started a new job. I've got my own desk and everything. <laughs> Look at this suit. Nice, huh? How do I look? Uncomfortable. Tidy, though. So how have things been going with the book? Great. It's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it. I've had these fantasies for years. Ideas, I mean. I just needed the faith to believe in myself. I've even started working on the cover. It's called Proper Passions. 
Wow, that is something. If you want help inking it in, just let me know. Seeing that ghost? It's like looking at a damn mirror. Oh, oh what? Wow. You mind if I borrow this for about 120 seconds? Uh, sure. Make sure you buy something, sweet sauce. Restrooms are for customers only. Hello. Watch and learn, son. Hello yourself? Excuse me, do you mind helping me find a very special book for a very special lady? It's called the Karma Sutra. Mm. <laughs> Subtle. Ah, yes, the Karma Sutra. What goes around comes with strong antibiotics. <laughs> Look, you are not the first guy to try the whole help me find a book routine, and you are definitely not my type, but this whole dirty grandpa thing you got going kind of works. How about I give you my number? And if I'm not doing any... Oh, hello, Mr. DeMille. I am ready for my close-up. Oh, sh <laughs> Do you need anything? Damn it, Cochran. What did I do? Hey. That's so exciting, Bernice. I'm really happy for you. I feel so fortunate to have this honor. And look at this. It's an actual contract stating that my book will definitely be sold in this very store. She brought that herself. Totally unnecessary. I don't even know what to say. This is such a huge deal. It really isn't. I mean, it's consignment, so you can sell just about anything. I've got a guy that does homemade erotic chia pets, so... Come on, get excited. Hey, this is a big deal. Look, I'm really proud for you, Bernice. Thank you, and I could not have done it without my new beau. He's encouraging, he's supportive, and he's... Brent? Oh, oh hey, guys. I'm sorry, what's happening? Oh, how I've missed you, my dearest. And I you, my spectral sweetheart. Are you f kidding me? What's wrong? What's wrong? Okay, are you aware that this is my ex? Well, since I'm the man, technically you're my ex. But I don't understand. You were done with him. No, I wasn't done with him. I, I mean, yes, but... Seriously? This guy? I mean, you broke up, right? What? A year and a half we dated, and now he's just touching someone else's shoulder. Brent doesn't touch anything. This guy? What? How? He is the rock upon which I will build my dreams. <laughs> Lost. All right, you guys ready? Uh, what is? I missed something, didn't I? Uh, well, we're set up if you want to get going. Okay. Uh, you know, there's a lot of action that happens back here behind the counter. If you want to come check it out. Oh yeah. You best leave this to me, Cochran. Maybe a little bit more than you can handle. Well, uh, let me set some stuff up at least. Okay, so uh, a lot of activity happens back here with you? Oh, yeah. Okay, um, well, all right. Uh, where should I put it? Oh, damn it, that's my line. You know, I was just reading in the paper about how they found another one of those severed arms in the park. Oh, wow, what is that, three now? It's awful. <sighs> With all this weird activity here in town, it sure would make me feel better to have a big, strong man hanging around. Or maybe two, twice the pleasure. Maybe you get a little safety sandwich or the Colonel's rotisserie gold. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I gotta go do a thing and... Nice move, Slick. Maybe now you can actually get what you really need. Maybe you could give me something I really need. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Could you write down Pretty Boy's phone number for me? Damn it. It was at the church. 
Penny had just broken up with Brent. Well, much like the good book, that is open to interpretation. I found myself alone. I needed a moment of solitude to reflect. He was in the bathroom. After I came out, we bumped into each other. I just loved his willingness to open up about his emotions and his IBS. <laughs> okay, sweetie. That's when I knew. I mean, Bernice, of all people. Really? How could someone's friend do this to them? It blows my mind. I mean, you think you know somebody. Exactly. I mean, where's the loyalty? Yep. For God's sake, you work together. Thank you. And then he goes and tries to steal your book skank. Yes. Yeah, so... Wait, what? What? What the f*** is happening? You know what? Do you still have the mayor's number? No, you told me to delete it. Yeah, so you still have it, right? Look, even if I did still have it and called, say, the past five nights in a row, she ain't gonna answer. Okay, well, I need her number. Why? It doesn't matter. I just do. Hey, <laughs> I get it. She's good for rebounds, but she does not respect a safe word, okay? Customers have complained about seeing unusual things here, because apparently this is a great place for unusual, unbelievable, awful things to happen. Sometimes they hear noises, find things mysteriously out of place, even see books fly off the shelves. Apparently a lot of upsetting things happen in this store. On the rare occasion, employees would see old man McCarter wander in the aisles around here, but there was no physical evidence, so that's why we're here. But sometimes you don't always get what you want in a bookstore, so we'll see. I think he's trying to communicate with us. Oh, I'll be right back. What the hell she go? I don't know. By the way, did you hear that Bernice was dating Brent? <laughs> What's he doing here? Guys, I think you remember Taylor... Lockhart. Lockhart of the mayor's office. What's up? Hey. hey. Taylor's gonna be joining us tonight because he wanted to spend some time with me. So you two are... We're hanging out. Since when? Since she called me earlier. Oh no! Can you get that? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Not that I'm trying to cause trouble, but this seems a little hard to believe. Didn't you once say he was an unbelievable ass? Mm -hmm. Has. I said has. Thank you. Do you understand? No. So, you want to date me? No. But you want me to date you? Yes. I don't get it. I want to make someone jealous. Oh. So you don't like me? No. Oh, you seem really nice, though. How long have we not been dating? That's not important. We can figure it out later. Okay. I get paid, though, right? Yes! I just want Bernice to get jealous when she sees how good a real relationship can be. Oh, you like Bernice. As a friend, but mostly I want her to dump my ex. Oh. You want to get back with that guy? Ew, no. Then why do it? I, I'm not sure. Do you want the money for a new synthesizer or don't you? Yeah, for sure. Okay. What's that? 
I've been thinking, with all my newfound success, do you think I need an agent? All you need is an agent of the Lord. I still can't believe you came tonight. Well, I wanted to support you, even if I can't fully support what you're doing. Searching for spirits? No, reading something other than the Bible. Oh. Hey, careful, careful. Oh, Brent. You're positively wild tonight. <laughs> hey, safety first. Is that the EMF reader going off or the beating of my heart? It could be anything. <laughs> I'm definitely sensing something here tonight. Um, you're pretty sensitive. <laughs> Carter, are you here? Can you make your presence known? Come on, old man. Just give us some action tonight. Listen. Ah! Am I the only one here not getting my swerve on tonight? It's just those two. Oh, sorry to disappoint. No, that's not what I meant. It's what just... happened? We heard yelling. What are you doing here? He just happens to be my new boyfriend. So, there's that. We're totally into each other. Your new boyfriend. Don't you think that's rushing things a bit, Porkchop? Don't you ever call me that again, Brent Less. What's happening? Well, where I'm from, we call this a pissing contest. I'm gonna need more money for this. Shh. I think we're all moving a little too fast. I think we've all been given free will and we can just do whatever we want. Mm, well, then, maybe we should. You barely even know him. Brent! Oh my! man. You don't do that? I'm sorry, I can't take the sexual tension tonight. Larry. No. Oh, you ghost hunters are a lot freakier than I was expecting. Go ahead and start the thing. Now? I thought you were gonna join. I, I can't get the taste of Copenhagen out of my mouth. So, I quit the office job <laughs> and my ma kicked me out. But it's just temporary. Until we could get things smoothed out, Larry said I could stay with him here at Mrs. Malone's. He has his own bed. I guess I learned that even though life can be confusing sometimes, you can't let frustrations get you down. And you can't lose hope. You just need a, a good friend who will be there for you when you get down. Because that's what friendship is about. Sticking together. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs. M. And if you're not sure who is your good friend, just ask them to take you to the hospital for an emergency oral STD exam. That clears things up pretty fast. The prescription ointment helps too. True. What is she doing? It's just her thing.
cutting it? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm, go I'm gonna fix your crotch right quick. Fix my crotch. <laughs> Unless you think he needs to rest. <laughs> I don't really know if he has any. Oh. <laughs> it's like an Indian burial mound. But with bone fragments. <laughs> so, how did you guys meet? Mission work. Did you guys. Hey, you work. Shit, sorry. Right. <laughs> don't say shit. <laughs> Down at Terry's. You wanna, you wanna dance? <laughs> dance, bitch, dance. <laughs> so who knows what we'll find in Stagrass? 